Welcome to part two, or segment two, or show two mm -hmm. of the Move More Challenge. That's part of our Love Living Life on Christian Fitness, and we did one part already, and that was a lot of fun. So today is gonna be a little bit different as well. We're gonna show you things, activities you can do in the Move More Challenge. Yeah, the Move More Challenge is just move more during an everyday activity. In the, in the, Definitely go back and watch show number one because we talked about walking and talking on your phone, having standing meetings, using the stairs, putting your grocery cart away, park further at the grocery store and just walk in instead of waiting for a parking spot. Have relay so, races on stairwells and... Walk during lunch, you know, walk your <laughs> hallway. Anyway, so a lot of just little simple tips that can in increase your movement throughout the day without worrying about, I've got to go to the gym for an hour. No, just take the stairs at work or take mm -hmm. the stairs at church or go for a walk during lunch for 10 minutes or whatever it might be. So just move more that's that's what it, the challenge is to we're move more. challenging you to move more oh. yeah and why because we spend so much time seated people yes. sit on their computers all day they sit um, and watch Watching TV, TV all, all night all so if you sit for too long it's extremely detrimental to your health and it's called and these are we're gonna give you some facts here but they're the detriments to prolonged uninterrupted sitting that's I guess the technical term prolonged uninterrupted sitting meaning sitting too long and here are the detriments to that back and neck pain from poor posture from poor posture can be chronic yeah if you have poor posture it can end up being chronic so if I walked around I'm not even gonna do it but if I had poor posture when I walked around that's gonna become chronic after 5 10 15 right. 20 years it's gonna become the norm and it can cause chronic problems well so, think about this because so many people are on computers now and they're hunching over, they're doing this. So the key is stand up often, move often so that you can recorrect or correct your posture from being hunched over. Not just computers, what about phones. cell phones? Yeah, yeah, exactly, cell phones. People are like this all the time, surprised people don't have knots on the top of their head from running and things, so they're constantly. <laughs> anyway, so proper posture is the first one. Poor circulation is another one that reflects from sitting too long. And if you think about what happens when you sit, you cross your legs or you bend your knees or you know, whatever when you're sitting, but it does call, cause poor circulation. Yeah, they've actually done studies on airplane flights which you know you're in cramped quarters, you can't move much. Or driving a long yeah, period you're, you're of time. You're you you might well. notice that. So stop, if you're in your car, stop at a park or wherever and get up a rest area, get up and walk around a little bit. If you're on a flight, get just stand up, go use the restroom, whatever you can do, or just you can stand pump up where your you feet. are. Yeah, you can pump just, your feet, use your yeah. legs, move your legs, right. but increase your circulation. So another one is weakened muscles, and especially in the legs. Well, because if you aren't using them, you'll lose it. Right, you don't, don't use it. Don't use the muscles, you lose the muscles, and our body has great muscle memory, so it's really important to remember to use those muscles. And you know what? A lot of this is about living life well. It's a fact we're all aging. We're definitely all aging. We are? Yes. <laughs> One thing you can't avoid. You. I, yeah. <laughs> but the key is living life well, living it strong. And in one of our shows, we talked about doing activities to continue strength. And as you age, you can lose strength in your hands, your arms, all kinds of areas in the body. But if you move more and you use the everyday activities like sweeping and vacuuming, like we showed in the other show, mowing your lawn, whatever it is, gardening, those things help continue to keep you strong so you don't have that muscle weakening because it will happen if you don't use those muscles. Just be more active. So yeah, definitely. Weight gain. Well, we know if you just sit around and eat and you don't have a calorie deficit, you're probably going to gain weight. You're not active, yeah. Yep. You have to be on. able to burn the food that you're eating. You want the, those calories to, to go so you can eat more. Not that way though. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Increased risk of diabetes, heart disease, and cancer, which are all linked to just sitting for too long, not being active, and all these other issues that we talked about, the poor circula circulation, the weight gain, and all those things. And one of them that is really, if you think about it, it makes a lot of sense. Um, it slows down brain function. So sitting all the time, not moving, not being active, and constant sitting, you get sleepy. If you sleep too, if you sit too long, do you get sleepy? Well, is that a key that you've sat too long? Slows down the brain function. That's why we say mm -hmm. get up. Uh, our last show said get up, you know, set a timer if you have to, or every time, you know, you see the clock hits 30 and then in an hour, stand up, do what you have to do to increase that circulation. Yeah, it slows down the brain function. So don't just, it's so funny because what do they used to call someone that sat and watched TV all the time? A couch potato? A couch potato. Oh. Potatoes don't have brains. <laughs> sure, yeah, no, right. you got it. Ding, ding. <laughs> 
potatoes don't have brains. So anyway, it slows your brain down. All right, and the last one, it shortens the lifespan, of course, because of all the other facts that we just gave you. Because it's important to get your blood moving in your body. It is important to get your blood pumping through your heart. You know, if somebody has brain, I'm not brain, um, heart surgery. Do you know what they do right after that heart surgery? The very next day, here they've cracked the chest open, gone in the heart, done what they needed to do for repair, put that person back together again. The very next day, in recovery, they have them standing up and walking the very next day because it's so important to have that blood flowing in your body. Circulation, circulation, circulation is circulation. key. Right, right. All right, so last show we covered eight. We've got three more great little tips for you today. So let's look at it. It's going to be tip number nine. You're going to go, where are the other eight? Yeah. You have to go watch the other show to see the first eight. So when you see that this is tip number nine, don't think you missed them all today. But this is our tip number nine on the Move More Challenge. Look how beautiful this is, this tree-lined street that we're on. We're actually in a park here in Pinellas County down in Florida. And our encouragement for you on this Move More segment is to go to a local park. You know, you may pass them every day out on your way home from work. How often do you stop and just go for a walk? Or today we're what? We're going to play a game today in the park. And we're going to walk. And you can go home, pick up your family, and bring them all outside and get exercise outside at a park. Move More. So that was a beautiful park yeah, we went to it. and it was part of us moving more and showing you just a great place to go. Parks are so nice to go to. Mm -hmm. And I, I even mentioned in, in when we were filming that if you're at work and you've been in a building all day, one of the best things you can do is go outside afterwards. So go home, pick up your family. If you have family, pick up a friend, meet a friend there, whoever it is, but go to a park and enjoy the fresh air. And that particular park is only uh, maybe, I don't know, three or four blocks out of our way on our, on our route to get home. So every day when we leave here and go you home, see that park. that's maybe three or four blocks yeah. away. So it, it's not that far away. It's simple for us just to go, you know what, let's just swing by that park tonight. And mm -hmm. even just driving through, you saw how relaxing that was. Beautiful, the tree-lined street and the water. And, and you can get out and just take a you know five, 10 minute walk and then head home. So And if you don't have a park nearby, just walk in your neighborhood. We're big walkers, we love to walk. So we'll find all kinds of places to go mm -hmm. for a long walk or a bike ride or a run or something like that. We don't run as often as maybe we no, should No, unless something's chasing to. us, but uh, that's right. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> We go for a long distance walking yeah. and that's the whole key of enjoying the outdoors. I mean, it's, it's fun, yeah. it's awesome. So speaking of the outdoors, let's look at our next Move More Challenge, we stay at the park. One of my favorite things to do is to go for a walk. Mm -hmm. And it can be a short walk, so if it's a short walk, make it a brisk walk. But go for a long walk. Enjoy the outdoors. I mean, there's health benefits in going for walking. Vitamin D from the sun, yeah. one of the most important vitamins you Very can Very important. And by the way, vitamin D is the way you absorb other nutrients, so it is important to have vitamin D. But I'm just telling you, go for a walk. Enjoy it. Bring friends, family, challenge yourself, do speed walk races. You can do all kinds of different parts of walking. You can make it a stroll, but make it a long stroll but there's a benefit from walking and do it every day. Look at this out here. Yeah, that's the best part. When you do it at a park, yeah. I mean, look at this. You've got the water, the trees, the, the I love seeing the wildlife. A lot of parks have great little things. They've got this nice little bridge. You can get fresh air. Be careful, it does have a gator caution. Caution for the alligators. <laughs> caution for the gators. <laughs> Only in Florida. Yeah. So this is the watch for wildlife warning. You've got gators, snakes, and coyotes. So be careful on your walks, but enjoy your walk. <laughs> Practice it. That's actually a nice breeze. Feels good. Stay out of the sun. But... I don't know what those burdens are. So one of the other great benefits is look at this out here. This is beautiful. 
Wildlife. Hey guys. Hello. Yeah, I know, exactly. That's what I was just gonna ask you about. How's the family? The family's over there camouflaged in that green thing. Kind of like the book of Acts when fire fell, tongues of fire were on their heads. That was so much fun. And you know what, that little bird, that was, we didn't put that noise in there when we were walking by and Rob, Rob's like looking at the bird. It just started to- It spoke back to I said, hey, it spoke back. <laughs> it was you know. kind of funny. But that was so much fun. I mean, what a yeah. great park. And you know, I didn't think about it until we started looking back at the footage and you could hear the wind blowing. So the wind was out there. It was a beautiful day. It was yeah. a gorgeous day. And, and it rained right before that. And yeah. The rain let up and opened, you know, the, the skies opened up just in time for us to go shoot this segment, which was great. And Lori brought up a really good fact on that about vitamin D, which going out Very and getting important. vitamin D in the sun is the, probably the best source for that. But vitamin D allows you to absorb the other nutrients. Yes. So if you have a vitamin D deficit, you can't absorb the other nutrients. So you may be eating as healthy as you can and think you're getting all these great vitamins, but if you're low in vitamin D, you're not going to absorb the other nutrients. Right. So vitamin D, vitally important. That's our maybe our, our health tip for the day. So anyway, <laughs> even though we're having fun with the Move More Challenge and walking, but parks, one of my favorite things, and we've done a lot of shows in parks. If you watched Christian Fitness long enough, you've seen us and do all kinds of, from walking to exercising in the park and doing all kinds of fun things, but we love, love to go to parks. And we love walking. So there's a challenge for you, just walk. If you don't wanna do some of the other things that we've done, like running up and down stairs, go for long walks. What a great way to actually have conversation with somebody that you care about or with a grandchild or a niece or nephew or, and a, and a great way to just, if you're by yourself, pray and walk. Oh, absolutely. And worship. Yes. Take more. Yes, absolutely. Great. So we're going to stay at the park and we actually took something with us so we'd have a little extra fun at the park. We said we were going to come to the park and play a game, so we brought our beanbag toss with us. So we're going to set this up and have a little fun while we're here at the park. And it is still a really good way to exercise. We had so much fun with that. Uh, of course, Rick and Andrew went out there with us and they were brave enough to actually hold the bean bag in front <laughs> of their face to... while we're throwing it and flipping it around. But anyway, we just well, you were really that. good at it. it I was mean, fun. He, he kept getting them in and I think I got maybe one or two. <laughs> you got but... excited when you got it. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it, it's fun. I mean, and that's the other part of it. It's here we are playing a game, but we're moving our arms, we're tossing, we're, I mean, increasing blood flow. So, but it was a lot of fun and I thought that was hilarious. They're like, okay, let's help Lori out. Let's <laughs> let's kind of help her get one in. So it was an absolute blast. But yeah, I mean, it's a simple thing. Um, there's other games you can play, of course, but on this, you know, you're stepping forward, you're right. striding, you're Horses. using body parts, you're balancing. Yeah, so that was something simple. Yep. We took, we actually borrowed Rick, our production manager. Yeah. He brought that for us, so, cause we didn't have one. But anyway, no, we had to go get one. That but was fun. all kinds of other games you can do at the park. Yeah, horseshoes. Horseshoes, because if you think about horseshoes, if you can find them or the throwing darts there's weight to those so you're actually tossing something that has a little bit of weight and you know what even though you may miss it but make it a challenge and and then laugh at yourself when I always laugh at myself when I make a mistake or do something silly in a game but use your other arm 
so yeah. that it helps your coordination. But there's those lawn darts, there's frisbee, there's frisbee golf. I've never played it, but we've seen it. Mm -hmm. And actually that park that we go to, I think they actually might have, no, that might be a different park. But anyway. There are parks with frisbee golf, yeah. if, if, if yeah. that's your thing. But yeah, just throwing the frisbee, it fits under the seat of your car. So when you're headed home or you're, you're, you're out and about, and you think, oh, I didn't load all the games in my trunk. A frisbee. You can put it in the trunk. You can put it under the seat of your car. You always have that. With well, that you simple. can. You can find if you're in a park, pine cone, kick a pine cone, get a ball. <laughs> I know that sounds pine so cone silly. soccer. Yeah. Yes. Or, or bring a ball with you and and get a group of people together and do kickball. You know, create your bases and do a little you know field of your own or just how, throw the ball. How about like, balloons? Well, we, we did a balloon show. Oh <laughs> we encourage gosh. you to go watch that on our, on our would website, ChristianFitnessTV.com. But go there and watch our balloon show. We did some crazy stuff, actually, in this studio with balloons. You can take some balloons to the park and mm -hmm. play balloon volleyball, do all kinds of different things with the balloons. Of course, they'll probably pop if they hit the grass. So but anyway, what about that'd be part one of the challenge. Those? bounce balls that have mm -hmm. the rubber band on it. I just mean, anything, anything to be great, to <laughs> have fun. Of all get, kinds yeah, of just anything to move. It's called the move more challenge. Yeah. Anything you can do to move more, make it more fun. Uh, we, I, we just enjoyed walking. I mean, you saw that earlier, just walking and seeing the wildlife and the birds. And of course you saw, we played the beanbag toss right by the water. So I don't know if we paid much attention to the alligator warning because we were like oh. right by the water. But well, anyways. that's the one thing, when you're having fun, you're not paying attention to other distractions, so your focus is on yeah. what you're doing, which I think we is great. We wouldn't have been bothered anyway. We had beanbags. Well, we like we a did weapon. do a show, a, one of our shows a long time ago, we were actually on a bank, and our heads are facing um, a little canal, and there is an alligator behind us, and we could hear him. And it, you know, we just kept going with it. So I'm sure some of, because you know, we've had like Gary with us for a long time on his camera crew. He probably would remember that. But it's interesting when you go out to parks where we saw a bunny. I got all excited on one of our walking shows seeing a bunny. But there are a lot of things in nature you get to see. It just makes it more fun. Well, we did a show with Jeanette, who who works with us as well, a dear friend of ours, where she and her husband would go out and feed the birds, and the birds would actually yes. come up and feed out of their hand. And I mean, so anyway, just amazing things you can do. Just we encourage you to get out, enjoy the parks, or just as part of the Move More Challenge, move more wherever you are. We talked about all the detriments to prolonged, right. uninterrupted sitting. That's even hard to say. Uh, but don't sit too long. So even though we're being a little hypocritical by sitting, telling you not to sit too Should long. We stand? No, because we, we just were. We were just walking in the park and playing games. Well, we aren't right now. No, we aren't right now, but oh well, because we're going to get into scripture okay. and we're not going to do it for too long. It's not prolonged. We're only going to talk to scripture for five or 10 minutes, so that's not prolonged. But yeah, if you want to stand up and talk about scripture at home. So grab your phone, grab your Bible, whatever you can. We're going to be in the book of Acts, which I thought that was kind of fun. That bird had a red head. It reminded me of the book of Acts, but oh, anyway. That's right. um, so we're Acts 28. If you want to turn to that, we're going to be in the very first verse. Uh, but to set this up, in show um, tw in the show previous, we did Acts twenty. We talked about twenty seven and what happens and what happens right before mm -hmm. this. So this is Paul. He's on his way to Rome and he's on a ship. They were in a typhoon. Um, all the crew is worried and they're panicked. I mean, imagine being on, on the water in a typhoon <laughs> or a hurricane or some kind of storm. All the crew's worried and an angel of the Lord visits Paul and says, "Don't worry about it." I'm going to save you and everyone on the ship. All yes. 276 people aboard are going to be safe, even though you're in the midst of a storm. So, so that's the, kind of our the Lord encourages Paul to stay focused on the mission, not the circumstances of what he was seeing around him. So then we're going to pick up on Acts 28, 1 and 2. And that says, after we had safely reached land, we discovered that the island we were on was Malta. The people who lived there showed us extraordinary kindness, for they welcomed us around the fire they had built because it was cold and rainy. I think that's interesting, showed us extraordinary kindness. What well, you think about it, you're on a night, they didn't know where they were. They'd been in this typhoon, been tossed to and fro and thrown about. They weren't really quite sure where they were. They just knew, look, there's land, we need to get to land because the, the boats basically had it. It's the water's rushing and everything else. So they're going to a strange land. You don't know what you're going to run into. You don't know if they're going to be friendly, if they're going to accept you, if they're going to Well, not only that, you. these people were, you know, they also had been also experiencing the same typhoons and all these weathers. I mean, it's because this is a coastline. So you think about it, these people are so kind that they realize that here's this giant ship and it's run aground and all this is happening and the thing is falling apart. 
And what do they do? They build a fire and help the people that are coming yeah. on land. So, so the ship ran aground and it ended up, the, it got splintered from the waves crashing on it. So those that could swim swam to the island and those that couldn't swim grabbed, you know, planks or whatever broke off of the ship and, you know, kicked themselves ashore. But this is winter time, so now you're cold, you're wet, you've been in a typhoon for two weeks. They didn't eat for quite a long time. Until they, right towards right, the, the end. Right, the day before the end. They, Paul told them you need to eat and have the strength to be able to yeah. swim or kick your, you know, do whatever they you need to do to get. build a fire for him, and then yeah. Paul decides he's going to help bring Kindle to, or more wood to the fire, and he comes walking up. And these are people that don't know them, so he, they're all watching them. And Paul goes up and has uh, a bundle of wood and a... Snake is attached to his hand a and viper, they, yeah, a viper, viper crawls and out they of the wood. see it and you know he tosses the wood, he sees it and shakes the the snake off into the fire and they're all watching him going, oh my goodness. This is the most poisonous snake that there is, right. this viper uh, that latched onto Paul's hand, uh, the most poisonous snake. So there were all kinds of things that would happen after you got bit. Sometimes it was immediate death, but you would normally swell. Your skin would change color because the poison started to kill the skin. So your skin would change color. You would convulse. You would have all kinds of issues. So they all watch Paul like, oh my gosh, what's going to happen? But what I love about what Paul did, first of all, the Lord told him, look, don't worry on the ship. I'm going right. to get, you're going to get to Rome. So why would he worry about a snake? So what does he do? He just shakes the thing, but he doesn't just shake it and throw it back into the woods. He throws it, could, it into he the fire. It, he destroys it. Right. So it's trying to destroy him. What does he do? He destroys it so it can't harm him. But even more importantly, it can't harm anyone else. Exactly. Which I love that. You know, sometimes we read the Bible and we, we just skim over certain things. But you think about that. This attack on Paul, he didn't only repel the attack. He repelled it from ever attacking anyone again. He shook it into the fire. Well, his so then focus, what happens? Well, his focus is the people. You know, if you, if you read the book of Acts, if you read all of Paul's teaching... His focus is, number one, lead people to Christ. Introduce them to Jesus Christ. Tell my testimony. He tells his testimony of his encounter with Christ and stays focused on that. So I think that's one of the most important things that I see all the way through, that Paul experiences all kinds of distractions. You know, in the book of Acts, there's all kinds. There's a woman that follows them for a long time and tries to distract him and throw him off course. There's all kinds of things that happen, but he always stays in God's peace, in God's presence. He's steadfast. Absolutely. Think about he wrote the first and second Corinthians. He wrote so much of it in first Corinthians um, 15, 58 says, therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. I know we've talked about this before, but you think about Paul has always stayed steadfast. He never wavers on the fact that God has given him a mission, a calling, to do a specific task to introduce Christ, to talk about his testimony. We all have testimonies. Use your testimony to give God glory. So if you think about that, he didn't waver on what he went through. He didn't, oh, woe well, was me and worry and fret and all that. He knew by casting his care on the Lord because he knew how much Jesus loved him because he had an experience with Christ. And when you have a testimony, you have an experience with Jesus Christ. So you stand firm in knowing that people watch you just like people were watching Paul. My goodness, there were See all kinds of happen. people yeah, watching Paul. <laughs> yeah, and, and here they were, they knew they were on a ship and that there were prisoners and that maybe he was a prisoner. And what happens? He shakes that off. The snake is in the fire. And then later, they all are still watching him and they all receive a healing. Yeah, so the whole island ended up getting healed. But what I we'll go back we'll get to that in a second but what i love about this is you think in the natural you're thinking okay i've been on this ship i'm half starved i'm wet i'm cold and it's like oh thank you know thank you lord you saved me now i'm on dry land and then what happens a snake lashes on you oh come <laughs> on i mean seriously how much more do you, know, do you have to put up with? i mean this wasn't bad enough to go through all these other things now i get attacked by a snake so instead of screaming and yelling and running around, what does Paul He's do? He just shakes fast. the thing. Yeah, he just shakes the yeah. thing into the fire, like get off of me. You know, <laughs> think about that. The angel Lord said, "Don't be afraid." Right. I mean, when you know God's with you, things are going to happen. But fear is the opposite of faith. So he knew never open that door to fear. Fear is a spirit. You don't have it. You have power, love, and a sound mind. Right. So he knew that. So what does he do? 
Well, what happens is the, the islanders look at him after he, or the, the inhabitants right. of the island look at Paul and think, he must be a god. Okay. If he could shake a, this viper that kills people, the poison, if he could shake that off, he must be a god. And Paul, of course, is like, no, no, no. no, no he no. never pointed to himself. He always pointed to right. Jesus. So what does he do? One of the leaders on the island, their father is sick. So Paul goes and he prays, lays hands on him, and he gets healed. But what, the first thing he did was he prayed. In other words, we don't Absolutely. know what his prayer was, but I have no doubt that it had something to do with praising Jesus, praising God, and, and yeah. deflecting the focus off of himself and onto the one that does the healing. That's right. Yes, he used Paul's hands, but Jesus is the healer, not Paul. So I'm sure Paul's prayer had something to do with that. So all the people knew that, look, it's not about me. The whole serpent thing wasn't about me. It's about Jesus, the healer. And now Jesus is going to use me to heal. Through. So then the whole, after this, after this man okay. gets healed, it's the Bible says here later in Acts 28 that the entire island brings the sick and everyone gets healed. Everyone on the entire island gets healed. And God gets glory for that healing. And they're on this island for, I think, three months until winter has passed and they can take another boat. So imagine Paul's testimony over these three months. I mean, it, it, as Lori mentioned earlier, he always gave his testimony. He always talked about Jesus as the Messiah. If you were a Jew, he related it to the Old Testament. If you were a Gentile, he related it like he did on the ship, that my living God spoke to me, that it's a living God. It's not a false idol that you might worship, a bull or a goat or a little figurine. It's a living God. So he knew how to testify to whoever he was speaking to at that time. So imagine this island. You see this man shake off the viper, which, you know, was almost certain death. And then you see him lay hands on people, they get healed, he heals the entire island, but he never takes credit. He always gives Jesus the credit. So how many churches sprung up and how many people became believers exactly. on that island? Through his testimony. Yeah. So, you know, when you think about us today, all of us have a testimony of something God's done. And if you haven't had a testimony, if, if, if God still is working on things where you're, you will receive that testimony, receive it today and then use that testimony today. Receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior and use that testimony to honor and glorify Jesus. So ask for a testimony by asking for Christ as your Savior and it's as simple as receiving Him in your heart by saying, Dear Lord Jesus, come into my heart, forgive me of my sins, Thank you that you died on the cross for me. You bled for me and you're coming back again for me in Jesus name, amen. So receive a testimony, ask the Lord to help you, give you a testimony and then give it to others. Yeah, you may not have a testimony of shaking off a viper, but even a storm, the storm that they Any were storm survived is from a it. testimony yes, you walk through. We all go through storms. That's so right. just have faith like Paul did in that storm. Well, thank you for joining us on the Move More Challenge. And we want to, this is actually our prayer over you. And it's found in 3 John 1, 2, beloved. I pray that in all respects, you may prosper and be in good health just as your soul prospers.